Howdy, howdy, everyone. Chris here, and welcome to Garage Noise. Last week's episode, I shared with you how to primer and prep out your repair for paint. This episode is all about how to paint that repair. We'll walk you through step-by-step -step how to achieve a beautiful-looking finish. We'll talk about wet beds, what are they, how to use them, sealers, high metallic finishes, and what you need to look out for when you're painting your vehicle. So let's dig in and get started. This Ford F-150 is all ready for paint. In a previous episode, we straightened a large dent in it. We blocked it, sanded it smooth, primed it, and then we prepped out this surface to receive paint and clear coat. I'm not going to talk too much about masking in this video, but I did want to talk to you about how I tape this bedside off from the bedside to the cab corner. And what I use is this foam sticky sided tape. This is foam masking tape, and I'm going to lay it right on the edge of that peak of that bedside. Now, it is important that you properly sand around that peak before you tape it off. So you want to use at least 600 grit sandpaper and sand around that peak just so the clear adheres on the edge. Now I use inch and a half or two inch masking tape and I put the adhesive side down on the foam tape all the way down that bedside and then we'll fold it down and tape it to the cab and that will eliminate overspray from getting in between the cab. It'll give you a nice soft edge on that bedside of clear. This truck happens to be two-toned, so the first thing we need to do is get the bottom color painted. We want that to be drying so we can tape it off later on and spray the silver. So we've masked it off, we've washed it with wax and grease remover, and now I'm gonna tack rag it off before I put three coats of base on it and get that primer covered. The paint I'm using today is the Nason XL. This is a reasonably priced paint that covers really well. And I'm using the new Iwata Kawami gun. This is a new gun to me, and this is the first time we'll be using it today. We let the first coat of base coat flash off for 10 minutes before applying a second coat, and then we'll let it flash off for another 10 minutes and apply our third and final coat. And then after that's done, you want to check it, make sure you have all your primer covered, and there's no transparent areas. Now, I made a pretty good mistake here, and if you notice the mistake I made, do me a favor, leave it in the comments below. We'll see if you're right. I think it's more apparent later on in the video. Okay, now the paint is dry and we're able to mask off the rest of this vehicle. So we put plastic over the entire vehicle, cut out the areas that we're painting, and we're going to mask off the lower color on this Ford. Now's the time where I'm cleaning this entire panel with wax and grease remover. I'm looking over to see any imperfections or anything I might need to take care of before I start painting. I typically try to avoid using sealer, but because this is a silver color and it's a real high metallic finish and there's a couple areas that I've broken through into body filler, I want to go ahead and use a sealer on this. This is going to help fill any minor scratches that I might have missed in my preparation. It's also going to cover those body filler areas and just give us a nice base to apply our paint to. This particular sealer is made by Roberlo and it's a 2K sealer, meaning it is catalyzed and it will harden over the surface. Now that we have this bedside sealed, we're gonna go ahead and mix up a clear base coat. And basically what this is, is paint with no color in it. It's just clear base coat. You reduce it just like paint, two parts of the binder and one part of the reducer. And the reason we want to use this over the entire bedside is it's going to create a good base for our high metallics to lay in. So we want those metallics to lay flat and in a uniform way. I always try to use a wet bed when I'm doing any high metallic finishes, gold, silvers, even a, even a dark gray sometimes with a high metallic, I'll use a wet bed. So it is a good idea in those situations. It's going to give you a better results. So Basically, I'm just starting by spraying it over the blend area on the sealer. Then we'll go ahead and spray this wet bed over the blend area and then the entire panel, even the 2K sealer. And one thing to note, if you are using a 2K sealer, make sure you give that sealer plenty of time to flash off before you apply your wet bed. You want to apply your wet bed just like any base coat. You want to overlap 70%. You have a consistent distance from the panel that's four to six inches away. You want to 
have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. And I am running this uh, Wada gun at 20 PSI for the air pressure for paint. And then we'll bump it up when we do the clear coat. I like to apply a good medium to wet coat of clear base. And then we'll be ready to spray some silver. Hey, if you find this video helpful, support the channel by liking this video and commenting down below. There are a couple of nasty little chips at the front part of this bedside, so we want to touch those up as a courtesy to the customer before we paint and clear this. We want that to be touched up and underneath the clear coat. You always want to check your color match one way or the other. I'm going to use a spray out card here. This is a white and black checker card that allows you to see how many coats it's going to take to cover, primer, or sealer. And then what you can do is you can match it up against the vehicle to see if you have a good color match or a blendable color match. This paint matched up good and is easily blendable. Now we're ready for some paint, so I mixed up some Nason XL base coat, and we're going to go ahead and spray the edges and cover the primer. We'll put one coat on first, then we'll let it flash off, put another coat on until that primer's covered, and then we'll worry about the blend. Do you have to do your blend while that clear base coat is still wet? I am not so worried about it right here because the temperatures are cooler, so it's taking a little bit longer for that clear base coat to cure or flash off. But if it was a hot day, I would do my blend right away. So I would have my paint ready, do my wet bed, and then do my blend right away. When painting your silver, it's all about making a consistent finish in those metallics. So you want to make sure you're overlapping 70%. You have a consistent distance from the panel. Now here, I'm going to blend that edge of that paint line in a cross hatch pattern. Just one quick blend, make sure it's medium wet, and then we'll do our final blend at the end. So now we're going to put on our second coat of base. I did see a couple little imperfections in our first coat, so I let it flash off, and I sanded those out lightly with some 2000 grit wet sanding paper. And now those can easily be covered with a second coat of base. Just a reminder, you can find all the tools and products I use organized in my storefront. Link in the description. Now I'm applying the final coat of base coat, and I did dial my air pressure down just a little bit on this Iwata gun. I did notice I had a little, it was atomizing the paint just a little bit too much, and it was actually causing it to look a little blotchy. So you want to keep an eye on your base coat and make sure it all looks uniform. If you see blotchy areas, that's going to show up through your clear coat. So just be aware of that. Now, once we get the final coat of base on, I'm going to do orientation coat, which you're going to see me go in kind of a cross pattern. Do not want to put it on dry when you do an orientation coat. I've had some questions on that. You'll get what they call sand piling, which is a roughness in your paint. You always want your paint to be nice and smooth. So I'm just going to go over the blend here lightly. Then we'll do it over the entire repair area and we'll be ready for some clear coat. We put a little heat on it to allow that base coat to cure properly. And now we're going to go ahead and lay some clear on it. And the clear I'm using today is the 498 Nason clear coat. Again, watch your technique when you're spraying clear coat. It's all about technique, your distance, your speed, and the amount of air pressure to the amount of volume that you have coming out of your gun. I like to set my gun at three turns out to start with. Air pressure, depending on your gun, it's going to change, but usually around 29 PSI, and that's what I'm spraying this Iwata Kiwami at. I like to spray about four inches away. That's about my sweet spot. Now, if I'm really speeding up, I'll get a little bit closer. It all just depends on your preferences, and as you gain experience, then you're going to develop your own kind of style on how you paint. After the first coat of clear, I realized I hadn't pulled the paper to spray the bottom color. So we're going to go ahead and put a coat of clear on the bottom color. And then we'll be ready for our second coat of clear. 
Here's a good look at the bedside after our first coat of clear. Now it's not absolutely perfect, but we're not looking for perfection on our first coat. We want to really refine this on our second coat of clear. That's how we want it to look when we're done. So I spray it how I want it to look as a finished product. There's a little bit too much texture over the area that we did our repair. And that is because our sealer was, had a little bit more texture than I would normally like. So we're gonna try and flow it out a little bit with our clear coat. So I made a few little adjustments on my gun and we're gonna go a little bit slower and hit it a little bit harder to put a little more clear on this panel, help it to flow out just a little bit better. We still are probably gonna wet sand and buff this, but I wanna get it as flat as I possibly can. Now I'm just taking a good look with the sunlight on how the, those metallics lay down, what it's going to look like out in the sun before I start wet sanding and buffing it. I do notice there's a couple little particles of dust, but let's take a good look at this paint job. You can see a little bit of texture or orange peel at the top of this bedside. We're going to cut and buff this. We're going to do that in the next video. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it, but overall this finish looks beautiful. It laid down nice and the Kiwami gun sprayed really well. A little bit of a learning curve to it. I think I can tweak it and get it a little bit better. But overall, I'm really happy with how it sprayed and how it atomized the clear coat and the base coat. A little bit too much atomization on the base coat. That's one thing about these Awas, you really have to dial in your air pressure when you're spraying a high metallic finish. Here is a sneak peek of how this bedside looks after I wet sand and buff it. And we will do this next week. I'll show you exactly how we do it. And here is the finished product. It needs a little bit more polishing, but it came out nice and flat and smooth. And I'll show you exactly how to do that at home on next week's video. I appreciate each and every one of you watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. And we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.